if what you are going through is going to change you, don't let it make you worse than it met you. Don't let it make you bitter but better. Have you ever heard of Harriet Thubman? She was an extraordinary woman born into a life of slavery in America in 1820. She became an activist, an African-American abolitionist, humanitarian and union spy during the American Civil War. Harriet Thubman escaped and subsequently made 13 missions to rescue more than 70 slaves using the network of anti-slavery activists and safe houses known as the Underground Railroad. When the Southern dominated Congress passed the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 requiring law officials in free states to aid efforts to recapture slaves, she helped and guided fugitives further north into Canada where slavery was prohibited. She suffered cruelty in the hands of her masters in her growing up years. She suffered a severe head wound when she was hit by a heavy metal weight. The injury caused disabling seizures, narcoleptic attacks, headaches, powerful visionary and dream experiences which occurred throughout her lifetime. The Negro spiritual weighed in the water is attributed to her as a warning to uh, runaway slaves, to escaping slaves. The song told them to abandon the path and move into the water. By traveling along the water's edge or across the body of water, the slaves would throw chasing dogs and their keepers off the chase. Wade in the water, wade in the water. Children, wade in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Wade in the waters. Who's all the children dressed in red? God's gonna trouble the water. Must be the ones that Moses led. God's gonna trouble the water. Who are these children all dressed in blue? God's gonna trouble the water. Must be the one that made it true. God's gonna trouble the water. You see, a devout Christian, Thubman ascribed the visions and vivid dreams to revelations from God. She traveled by night, guarded by the North Star, while trying to avoid the slave catchers eager to collect reward for fugitive slaves. In 1849, Thubman escaped to Philadelphia, then immediately returned to Maryland to rescue her family and later dozen other slaves to freedom. She was named Moses by abolitionist William Lloyd Carrison after the prophet in the book of Exodus who led the Hebrews to freedom from Egypt. Surrounded by friends and family members, Harriet Thubman died of pneumonia in 1913. Just before she died, she told those in the room, I go to prepare a place for you. After her death, she, she was buried with full military honors in Fort Hill Cemetery in Abraham. Her family, her life was a blessing in spite of the terrible, imaginable ordeal she went through. She left a great legacy behind. You see, God gave us a promise in Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 3. God said, But now thus says the Lord that rescued thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overthrow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle on thee. Before I go, I'd like you to join me in prayer. Lord, I pray for someone out there today that they would know that you are with them through thick and thin. This week, this month, this year, and for the rest of their lives in Jesus' name, I pray that no matter what they go through, that they may feel your presence and power around them in Jesus' name. I pray that 
you will draw us up and close to you more and more than ever in Jesus' name. Well, until next time, may the good Lord bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful week.